no matter where you are. You are never out of his reach. No matter what the trial may be. God is able to see you through. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. I just hope that everyone had a good week. Amen. Yeah. And I just want to make uh, sure everyone realizes that this past Saturday concluded course two. And that means course two is done Saturdays for the rest of this month and July um, are going to um, be free Saturdays for everybody because we are going to be um, getting ready for the next course, course three, and uh, the the intercessor, right? Ministry of the intercessor. Um, and so we are going to be uh, diligently seeking the Lord and writing this. <laughs> well, the apostle here before me will be, because that's what God has put on her heart to do. So we're going to be taking some time off and allowing everybody just to have a little bit of a breather here during the summer, um, for the July's coming up and all other kind of a celebration. So uh, we're just going to have just a little hiatus. Come on, it's okay, all right? We're well, still going to be here on on Sunday mornings, Amen. We're still going to be doing our Zooms on Friday and Testimony Tuesdays, um, but we're just going to take a little bit of time to. Uh, Make sure that we're doing everything that the Lord wants us to do for course three. And then we will be letting you know when it's going to pick up in August at what week that we're going to be picking up. And that'll that'll happen sooner than later. We promise that. Um, and then we uh, we're going to seek the Lord about uh, either finishing up uh, with course four uh, this year or whether or not we're going to pick it up in January. So. Be praying about that because we really want to make sure that we're not losing momentum through this and that um, that we're doing the Lord's will. Um, but we also understand that we are we will be coming into a time after we finish course three that it's a busy season. People are traveling uh, with, with uh, the different holidays that come up. Um, but we, we also realize that there's not a lot to do in wintertime. So we, we'll just have to see how the Lord leads us and, and, and how you guys pray will, will definitely um, help uh, for us to make that decision. And we welcome um, your input on that as well because we want to make sure that this, this, uh, these courses are something that we can keep going with. You know, through the years that as people come in, that we can teach these things. And also, if you've already been through them, but you might have missed this one or you might have missed that one, you can come right along back in and and just keep getting filled up more and more and more. Come on. it's This is a training center. This is where we listen to the Lord's voice and, and let him teach us everything that we need to know so that we can go do the kingdom work. Amen. 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 So praise God. Hallelujah. And speaking of doing kingdom work. Um, make sure that you're taking the little QR code uh, cards with you when you leave um, and keep handing them out. Come on, we're, we're believing that God is going to fill this place for his glory, that more and more people are going to come in and they're going to glean and be and, and be blessed by the teachings that go on here at High Tower Ministries and the the family, the fellowship that happens here, the love that happens here. And and we just we just want to share. We want to we want to be ones that give, right? And so uh, we're we're excited that God has given this this great facility, and we know that this place is is already been prophesied that we are going to grow out of it. We and we keep standing on that word. We're going we're going to grow out of this place, and God is going to give us bigger and better places each and every single time that He moves us in the direction that He wants us to go. Yes. But for now. I'm just loving the fact that we have a place that we can call home, Amen. Amen. that we can come in here. We don't have to sweep out the devils every time we walk into a convention center, right? From all the stuff that happens there, we come in here, we feel the Holy Spirit's presence and we just pray. And we're just thankful for, for that. Yes. We're thankful for that. Amen. Thank you, Father. 
So I'm not sure if there's anything else that we needed to say, but I hope that you're ready for the message this morning because I'm excited for this one. You know, this, this one is, uh, th this one I think is going to really make you think because even the title I think is going to grab you and it's going to make you say, okay, God, what are you saying here? It's pretty easy to figure it out because God's saying right now, I will, if you will, Amen. Amen. I will, if you will. Amen. And we have to understand there are over 8,000 promises in the word of God. Come on. I, I just got holy goosebumps just saying that. I felt the presence of the Lord all over me when I said that because it's true. And they're all for me. That means they're all for you too. Hallelujah. Over 8,000. But I can tell you most of every one of these promises exist with conditions. Come on. And that's why it's this title that the Lord gave me, if I will, um, you will. That means that if I meet the conditions that are set forth in your word, Lord, that you say you will provide the answer and the blessing. Come on. So what's a condition? The definition of a condition is a provision upon which the carrying out of an agreement depends. It's, it, there's an agreement that comes into place with a condition because there's a, a promise attached. And that, so one person is saying, I'm going to do this if you meet the conditions. So we have to make sure that we meet the conditions of the agreement of what the word of God has established. But in the natural, an example of a condition might be for employment. So you might need to have a high school diploma. You might need to have a driver's license. It might require you to travel. You might have to uh, have no criminal background. Because they want to make sure that you're trustworthy in, in the environment that they have established. Come on. So if you meet these conditions, you'll qualify with the requirements, come on, that, that need to be met. And that means that your chance of employment is highly likely. Amen? So think about it in this way. If you take care of your body, you eat well. Don't judge me now. Come on. A lot of late nights that happen on this spot because we're here. We're traveling. I'm trying to get better about it. But if we treat our body good, if we exercise, we eat right, then we're going to be able to live longer, better, healthier lives. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That's yeah. biblical. And I'm going to throw one in there just because if you don't drink alcohol, you're not going to get a, a DUI ticket. Right? If you get behind the wheel of a car. Or you might not get that sickness that's going to attack your organs from that poison. Come on. So God's promises are full of conditions. And we're going to read 2 Chronicles 7.14. Y'all could probably close your eyes and, 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 and read this verse aloud by memory. Come on. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. Come on. And seek what? My face. Come on. And turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Come on. Then. And I will forgive their sins. God says, I'm going to hear from heaven. I'm going to forgive your sins. And I'm going to heal your land. Hallelujah. There's a lot of promises right here. But there's conditions in this scripture that we have to meet. This scripture is one that every single Christian around the world needs to know. 
Most ministries today are interceding for, for their areas, for their state, for this country. And it's all based on this, this scripture. Because they're saying, God, you said if we humble ourselves, God, we are, we are the called ones. We're called by your name and we're humbling ourselves and we're praying. We're seeking your faith, Lord. You said this. If we did this, Father God, that you will come in, Father, and you will rescue us, Father, because we have turned from the wicked ways of this world, God. And because we have, you said that you're going to heal us. You're going to forgive us. And you're going to heal this land, God, this land that belongs to you, that was founded on your name. Come on. If my people, which are called by my name, come on, are you one of God's people called by his name? I am. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah if you're called by his name. I am called by the name of the most high king. He is my God. And he knows my name. He knows your name. He knows everything that you do and that you're going to do. And he's waiting for you to keep into that place of humility. That place of prayer. Come on, that, that place where you're surrendered. Come on, we've talked about it before. That is, that, that, that is the position that he wants us to be in. Because in that position of total surrender, we're yielded to his spirit and we're quiet in front of him at his feet that he is going to answer. He's going to come in. He's going to answer. Because that's his promise. So we see if it's right there, if we humble ourselves, if we pray, if we seek his face, if we turn from his wicked ways, then God says, will I hear then? Will I hear from heaven? Then will I hear? That's an important part right there. He said that if we do these things, he will hear from heaven. Whew. He's saying that is if, if we submit to his statutes, if we submit to his commandments, the reports that he hears from the heavenly hosts now will be such a pleasing sound to him that he will forgive our sins. Come on, his heavenly hosts are surrounding us even at this very moment. Come on, we all have them together. They, they surround us always. They go everywhere we go, waiting for us to speak his word. Because then they can go and report to heaven and say, Lord, they're speaking your word. And he's going to say, well, we got to do something about this. What are they saying? And they're, and they're going to say, Lord, they're humbly seeking you, Father. And, and they're asking for forgiveness of all known and unknown sin. And God, what they really have on their heart is that they, you would heal their land, God. That it would be a land, Father, worthy yes. unto you, God. He will separate us from our sins. As far as the east is from the west, that's what he does. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And when he does that, he begins to heal. He begins to heal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is a, a message for everyone that is hungry and wanting to do the will of God. This message is for everyone who wants to line themselves up with the word of God. For their life. Come on, the word of, uh, of life is right there. And we, if we line ourselves up with that word, we're going to prosper. We're going to flourish. We're going to be fruitful in all the things that we put our hands to. And we have to understand that in that course, we may want this and we may desire this thing, but God says, you need to think bigger because I got something bigger for you over here. Yeah, you, you may want this little thing right here, 
because it, it it's going to be something that you can use not only for your personal self, but for my glory. But I'm going to give you something so much bigger. It's like we went from that place where we rented little little tiny halls to this place right here that God showed us over eight years ago. And he said, this is going to be your training center. And as you walk in my statutes and commandments for this training center, then you're going to expand. Your tents are going to expand. Your ropes are going to expand. And when I give you an expansion point, you're going to say, ho, ho. Look where we started and look where we are now for the glory of God. Because this right here is an establishing point. And he says, what are you going to do with this place? God's saying, what are you going to do in the place that I have already put you in? Will you flourish in that place and be okay? Will, will you listen to my voice and heed to my voice so that I can take you to that next place? Come on, come on, come on. Sometimes we have to be content in the place that we are so that we can get fulfillment in the word so that the word can bring us up higher to a higher level so that we can go to that next season of, of being fruitful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. A land free from the curse is what we're desiring when we speak this prayer. A land flowing with milk and honey is what he said in his word that he was he was promising to the forefathers. Come on, that that that's lush. That's green. It produces. It's fulfilling. It provides nourishment. It's a place of purity, a righteousness. In the natural and in the spiritual. Yeah. That, that's what this land is that he was talking about. Yes, it was a natural place, but it was also a spiritual place that he was telling the, the children of Israel about. Yeah. That this land is a land where they're going to flourish and they're going to prosper as long as they served him. Hallelujah. That's a condition. They had to serve him and put away all those false gods that they were carrying with them by the chains out of Egypt, just walking, pulling them along. And he's like, you got to let go of that. They just wouldn't let go. We got to let go. We got to let go of this season so we can go to the next season. Because we declare that we are the head and not the tail. That's where we begin to see him working in us. Come on, we are the head and not the tail. Yeah. We are above and not beneath. Come on, we are blessed and not cursed <laughs> because of our God and his promises, over 8,000 of them. If, if we obey. Huh. That's a hard thing. Obey. Obey. Come on, a lot of people go, as soon as that work, I'm going to. Right? It's even in, in, in the vows. And when we get married, if you, that you will obey. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Can we rewrite that? A lot of people rewrite that. <laughs> I got my stepdad back there pointing to my mom. Yep, we rewrote <laughs> We had to rewrite that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, obey, it's like, that's a hard thing to swallow. But when it comes to God, it should be easy because we know on the other side of obedience is blessing. All caps. Yes, yes. Exclamation points. Hallelujah. Come on. That's where we, we can, we, we need to break free from that, that mindset that, if I obey this, that it, it's not a bad thing. Right. Come on. Yeah. If we obey the laws of this land, we'll stay out of jail. If, if, we, if we obey the, the laws of God, we obey his statutes and his commandments, then we stay out of spiritual prison. Come on. Right. That's right. <laughs> and we're promised to go into eternity with him. Hallelujah. And not an eternity of darkness and, and gnashing of teeth and, and torture. So God is looking for a people that are serious about his business. Yeah. 
We have to be serious about his business. And we need to get ourselves in a right mindset. The, the mind of Christ is what we need to put on. We always talk about put on the mind of Christ. Put on the mind of Christ. And we have to daily remind ourselves. That's why Paul said, daily I crucify my flesh. Daily he put on the mind of Christ. He had to. We have to. It's the only way that we're going to stay in, in, in right alignment with the Lord. Amen? Amen. There's no more time that we have that, that can be wasted on, on frivolous things of this world. There really isn't. Time is short, and I, I don't, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but it seems like every time I wake up, we're coming here because it's Sunday again. I mean, it's like weeks are like boom, boom, and you know, it's like my work week's over, and then it, during that time, we're we're ministering, we're doing phone calls, we're we're doing things, and and before we know it, it's it's Friday, and and you know, Zoom time, and then Saturday, it's been School of the Prophetic, and then Sunday. But it doesn't it seem like it's like, boom, 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 boom. And it's not because we're really super busy. It's that God has sped time up. So it seems like it's just really supernaturally accelerated. And it has. It's okay to be busy, especially if you're doing the work of the Lord. It's okay. He'll give you rest. He'll make up for all that you're doing for him. Hallelujah. Sometimes we're tired. Yeah. That that we can't escape that. Our body does get tired, but he will give us sweet sleep. He will help us redeem what we pour into the, the kingdom work. He'll help us redeem our natural bodies and the things that we have to do to, just because there's, there's tasks that have to be done for daily life. Come on that are outside of ministry. He'll allow for us to redeem that. Yes. So it's okay that we're busy for God. I'll never be sorry that we're busy for God. Come on, come on. Amen. I won't make excuses to anybody that doesn't understand or that calls it a marathon that we're doing. Yeah, it is. It is a marathon. Sometimes it's a sprint, but it is a marathon. Because time is... Time is of the essence. We have to get out and get this place filled for his glory. Hallelujah. Where are all the people with the mohawks and the earrings and the and the tattoos and the, the clothes that, that are too tight or too ripped up or they don't smell just right? Where are they? Amen. That's what's going to start coming into the churches. And we still have to love them just as we love ourselves in our state that we're in with our clean clothes, with, with our appearance that looks right according to what's right, whatever. But you know what I'm saying? There's going to come a time when we're going to come into church and it's not going to look like it has before, but the feeling, the feeling's going to be there because the Holy Spirit's going to be there and he's going to be pleased because we're bringing in a people and he's able to work on that people. Come on, it's our job to get them in here. It's his job to take care of them and clean them up. Right. Mm. There's no more time to be wasted. We can't just play church. We have to be the church. We have to be the ones that the Bible talks about where we go and we preach the gospel. Amen. That's why this place is vital in this time, because we're preaching a word. We're teaching word that, that will help build the body so that when it does go out, it has the sword of the spirit that will take action in the places that God says go and take action. Because you can't walk into a, to a neighborhood unprotected that, that, that is not safe. You start walking into a neighborhood that's known for activity of, of the demonic and you're not protected with the word of God, that you don't have everything that you need, the armor of God around you, you're going to be eaten alive. So that's why it's so important that we come in here together and we learn so that when we do go out, when we are confronted with that, that time where it's, it's, it's either do or die, we're the last point of, 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 of touching someone before they may meet a fate that they don't want to meet. 
that last point where we're speaking a word over their lives that could change everything for them. How are we going to do that if all we're doing is playing? I know I just got serious, but we have to stand up and be the church that God called us to be yeah. in this time. Yeah. Come on, we have to boldly say, God, I will. I will. I will be one that will go. God, I will be the one to, to rise above the naysayers. I will be the one that will step out in faith, knowing that you're going to back me up every single time. You're right there. And I don't have to worry about it. And I'll be able to complete the task that you've set before me to complete for you. Yeah. I will. I will humble myself. I will turn from my wicked ways. I will be forgiven of my sins because that's what you said you're going to do. I, I want to see my land healed, God. Amen? So let's look at some more conditions that the Lord set before us. Jeremiah 29, verses 13 through 14, it says, And ye shall seek me and find me, and when ye shall search for me with all your heart, and I will be found of you, saith the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity. And I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Now let's look at the way the Amplified translation reads. Then with a deep longing, you will seek me and require me as a vital necessity. And you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found of by you, says the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes, and I will free you and gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from where I sent you into exile. Come on, God's saying in these scriptures that when we seek him with our whole heart and that we will find him. Come on, we are going to find him, saints. And also, he will restore back to us some. Right? Oh, you caught that. He will restore back to us all that was lost. All that was lost when we were away from him. Come on, it doesn't matter that we were away from him. It matters that we came back to him. And he forgives all that stuff back there. And he doesn't remind us from all that stuff back there. Thank you. And then he says, here, let me put a ring on your finger. Let me put a robe on you. Let me put shoes on your feet. Come on, you're my prized possession. I'm going to throw a party for you like you've never seen. Because you're my son, you're my daughter. You're precious. He will return back to us our promised land of blessing. That's what he's saying. You know, James where it says, draw nigh to God and he will what? Draw nigh to you. Right? That The apostle James right here is telling us that God says, I will draw near to you if you draw near to me. It's just like we say, if you take one step to God, he's going to take two steps to you. That's how much more he wants you. We should want him as much as he wants us. But we know that if we just take one, he's going to take two. Come on, he's going to be like that father running out to that son because he saw him from afar. He knew that was his son. And he's going to run to him, welcoming him back because he missed him. Yeah. He loves him. Yes, Lord. He wants the best for him. He doesn't want him eating pig slop, dirty, desperate. That's not a child of God. A child of God walks with integrity and purity and has everything that God promises because they are obeying his commandments, his statutes over them. They're in covenant with him. Come on, our God is a covenant God. A covenant God. So it's time that we get close to God. We need to be in a place of intimacy with God. Right? Not just a, a, a God knower, 
but someone that intimately knows him. Amen. Not just his name, but everything about him. And, and you can recognize him every time a situation may arise because you're going to feel him first. Yes. And you're going to recognize that he's there. And you're going to recognize that you need to hear what he's saying for that situation so he can take care of it. We need to hear his voice. And he wants to hear our voice calling for him. For him. Amen? Amen? He's waiting for us all to take that step that step that will cause us to come in closer because he wants to be closer. He wants to, for us to be closer in our praise, closer in our worship, closer in our prayers so we can be closer into his presence. Yes. So we have to press into that intimate place to make this happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell him how much you love him. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Love you, Lord. I can't do anything without you, God. Come on. Hallelujah. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes. Thank you, Father, for sending your Son, for giving us a way back to you. Yes. Thank you for saving me, even when I was filthy not deserving. You saved me. You pulled me up out of that miry clay. You stood me up. You cleaned me off. Come on. A little tough love. Smack me on the back of my head. Reminded me who I am. Yeah. I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. I'm your son. I'm your daughter. Come on. The father says, I will save your soul if you call out to me. Hallelujah. That is the beginning point, the very beginning point for every sinner saved by grace. Right there. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We have all done it. We've all been in that church service where we've gotten down on our knees because we knew that there was no other way. The Holy Spirit convicted our heart, and we knew that if we left there without doing that very important thing, of confessing Jesus as our Savior and asking Him to forgive us, that that could be our very last day. Hallelujah. Because the enemy would be outside lurking. Come on. But because we made that decision, we're here today. Come on. God says He knows every one of the days that He's given us. And the enemy can't steal us from any of those days, he cannot rob not one minute if, if we are in right standing with God. Come on, we have to be in right standing with the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, for whosoever, how many whosoever's are here in the, this morning? Hallelujah. Come on, I'm a whosoever. That's my scripture. We're all whosoever's. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Yes. God is merciful. His grace endures for all. But he says, if you just call on my name, I will save you. Save you from a life of pain. Save you from suffering. Save you from emptiness and void of love. Save you from an eternity of hell. Away from me. Come on. I personally am so blessed that I get to stand here in this place with you, knowing that God has saved me and that I have a promise to be with him. He saved me from myself. Yes. Come on, did he save you from yourself? Yes. He saved me from myself. Yes. Praise God. Hmm. I, I know that if God didn't save me for myself, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be here. And I thank him for that. 
1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. God is faithful and he's just if we go to him. Come on. If we go to him and confess our sins, come on, there's a condition. We have to go to him and we have to be able to say, I'm wrong. This is what I've done. But for put all that aside, I just want your forgiveness. And, and, and God, help me, strengthen me that I will not make these mistakes ever again. Amen. All our sin was paid for with the blood of his only son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how much he loved us. That's how much he loves us. That's how much he loves every one of them out there. Hallelujah. That blood is sufficient for them too. Yes. And how are they to know about it if we don't go out there? Come on. Wow. Jesus, he gave his life for us. He gave us a way back to the Father that we would even be able to call him Lord. That's a sacrifice. His life for all of ours. That's a price to pay, especially when our lives really weren't worth saving. But to God, they were. To God, they were. To man, no. But to God, yes. Because he knows every single one of the hairs on our heads. And he has a plan and a purpose for every single one of us to achieve for him. Come on. His blood. His blood. Leviticus 26, 1 through 12. It says, ye shall make you, <clears throat> sorry, ye shall make you no idols nor graven image. Neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If ye walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, oh, this is good, then I will give you rain in due season. Come on, we know about that rain, don't we? God told us about that rain a few weeks ago. And the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit, and your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time, and ye shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land safely. And I will give peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of your land, neither shall the sword go through your land. And ye shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. For I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. And ye shall eat old store and bring forth the old because of the new. And I set my tabernacle among you and my soul shall not abhor you. And I will walk among you and will be your God and ye shall be my people. That's a lot of love right there. Hallelujah. God is is, is giving us more if conditions. If we walk in his statutes and keep his commandments and do them, God says, I will give you rain just when you need it. Hallelujah. And he goes on to say, then I will make your land yield her increase to you. And then I will make your trees yield their fruit to you. And he also says he will give us peace in our land. And the enemy will not be allowed to come in our land. And if the enemy does come in, we will chase them out and they will flee. He tells us five will chase a hundred and a hundred will chase 10,000. Leviticus 26, 40 through 45 goes on to say, if they shall confess their iniquity 
and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespass against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled and they they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity, then I will, uh, will I rather remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham. Will I remember and I will remember the land. The land also shall be left of them and, the, and, and shall enjoy her Sabbaths while she lieth desolate without them, and they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity, because even because they despise my judgments, and because their soul abhorred my statutes. And yet for all that, yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away, neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly, and to break my covenant with them. For I am the Lord their God. I am the Lord your God, he's saying. But I will, for their sakes, remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt, in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their God. I am the Lord. God is so faithful. Hallelujah. Even in our total disobedient lives, he still gives us a way out of our sin and disobedience. He still cares for us. God says, I will. I will love you regardless of your past trespasses. Come on, regardless of your disobedience, regardless of your turning away from me, I will not cast you away. Neither will I destroy you. I will keep my covenant with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is worthy. Yes. He's worthy. Malachi 3, 10 through 12. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not Open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. Listen, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Can you picture that? You need to picture that now. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And listen, and all the nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. This is the only time you're going to see in the Bible that the Lord tells us to test or try him in our obedience to command that he to, to a command that he is giving to us. He says, if we bring our tithes into his storehouse so that there's meat in his house that we can call him out on his word to prove that he will open the windows of heaven to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, try me. I'll prove it to you. Hallelujah. Come on. Yes. And I'll pour out a blessing that's so big that you will not have room enough to, to receive it all. Come on. That's, that's not just blessing for our obedience for giving the tithe from, from what he allowed us to make. That is a blessing that's generational, that he's going to keep pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring, and our cupboards are going to be filled. Our storehouses are, are going to be filled for his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if that isn't reason enough to become a covenant tither, he goes on to say that he's going to rebuke the devourer off of our blessing so that we're not going to suffer any loss. Come on. And just to prove every nation, to, pr to prove to every nation or people, he's going to make it so apparent that we're so blessed that they will call us blessed because they're going to see our fruitfulness. Look what he's doing in Israel. He has taken a desert 
and given them technology that they are able to grow things in places that never have been able to grow and not just grow a little bit. They're growing so much that there's a surplus. They can feed everybody in their nation and more. They're sending it out there so much. They're blessed so much with what they're growing in the desert that they're sending it to other nations. Hallelujah. That's this. That's right. That's this right here. Fruitfulness. Hallelujah. They can't even contain it. It's growing so fast and so much that they have to give it to other nations. <laughs> Now I want to share something that's very familiar with you. Deuteronomy 28. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Did you hear that? If you follow everything that he's telling us to follow, he's going to set us to a point where people are from all nations around are going to be able to see us because we're so fruitful, because we're so blessed. That's what he's saying right here. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if Thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. That word keeps popping up. If. If. That's on us. Good. He says, blessed shalt thou be in the city. Blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shalt be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle. The increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all, in all that thou settest thine hand to do. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, and in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in the, his season, and to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend to many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and shall not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. Hallelujah. That's powerful stuff. That's the blessing the Lord will pour out upon us if we walk in his commandments and his statutes. That right there. I'm, you can't argue with that. I don't want to argue with that. I want all of that. That is mine. Hallelujah. That is yours. Yes. Call it down. But <laughs> if we don't, he also makes us aware of the curse that will come upon us if we disobey him. Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 19. I'm not going to read all the way to 68. <laughs> That's your homework. Most of y'all already know. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. 
Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. Cursed shall thou thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of the body and the fruit of the land, and the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Cursed shall thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shall thou be when thou goest out. The wrath of God, we see right here, that he will send upon the disobedient, extends from verse 20 all the way to verse 68. That's a lot more than 1 through, through 14. Think about 1 through 14, if you obey my word and my commands and commandments and statutes, I'm going to give you everything. But if you don't, you got to keep reading because there's a lot to read about here. If you come against me, if you come against and be a disobedient, so read. If you haven't read it in a long time, read it. I, I really want you to read 1 through 68 because I believe that it's going to have a big impact on your decision making for your future. Yeah. Because 1 through 14 is your future. 1 through 14 is your destiny. 1 through 14 is this season and next season and next season and next yeah. season. And share this. Share this with everybody that you know. Remind them. Even if you, if you don't think they need reminding, remind them anyway because they need reminding. Hallelujah. We all need reminding. The Lord says, read Deuteronomy 28. Because it will put us in the right mindset of if you will, I will. Amen. And also... If I will, you will, Lord. Us saying to him, I will, so you will. Because that's what your word tells us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, I, I hope that y'all are or y'all are getting this. It's it's good because it's good to re reflect on the old testament laws so we can appreciate what Jesus did for us in the New Testament. Amen. Yes, we're not held to all the laws. Praise the Lord for that. Because he made it simple for us. He said, if thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind, we're good. But he also said, that is the first great commandment. And the second is like unto it, that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If we can just do those two things, love God with all our heart, with every ounce of our being, and love our neighbors as we love ourselves, because there's not a person in here that does not love themselves. Then we got everything covered that was in the law. That was so, I mean, there were so many laws, they didn't even know if, if walking down a sidewalk, they were doing it wrong. I mean, it was like that, you know what I'm saying? So we have to understand that God has conditions attached to all his promises. Come on, and we must answer the call and say, I will, God. I will, God. Because he's already spoken, and he said already that he will. So the biggest question is, will you? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hannah, come on up. I hope you all enjoyed that. Yes, hallelujah. I hope it was something that blessed you and encouraged you and provoked you. To remember, because God said, I will if you will. Amen. Come on. And there's so much that he will. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So, Father, we just thank you for the word. We thank you, Father God, for this time together, Lord. And the remembering, Father God, of the verses that you shared with us today, God, that will keep us in that mindset, Father of obedience, of surrender, of, of right standing. And, and Father, that we would be able to say that we are ones that follow your commandments, that follow your statutes, Lord, and that we love you, Father, and we love our neighbor, Lord. You've given us a love for everyone, God. And God, we ask that we are able, through that love, to share this word today with many, Many that are lost, many that are, are broken, many are of, of those that, that have just forgotten that you said, Father, that you will bless us, 
that we would not be able to receive. There would be not enough room physically that we would be able to receive what you will pour out upon us through our obedience to your word that's been written over our lives. So God, we thank you. We bless, we praise, we worship you. And God, we say, this is for me. This word is for me. I receive it and I will share it. So Father, we ask a blessing to be upon your people today. Father, as they go out today and they get to spend the rest of the time with their family and their friends and, and just enjoying this beautiful day that you have made. God, we just speak a, a, a blessing over them. Father, that the angels would surround them like a hedge of protection, Father. That they would have road mercies, Father, everywhere they traveled, Lord. And that peace would follow them everywhere, God. We speak Debar Shalom over them, Lord. Nothing broken, nothing missing, nothing damaged. And we also speak Shalom Shalom, which is perfect peace over them. Everything that concerns them, everything they put their hand to, Father, we call blessed and highly favored of you. God, let them be ones that go and multiply for your glory. Let them be ones that, that bring people into the house so that they can be trained up as we're being trained up by your word and by your Holy Spirit, Father. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for all that you're going to do with this day. We thank you for everything that you have done. And we honor and give you glory and, and praise you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen.